In 1905, the promised Messiah earmarked a large tract of land in Kadyan for a graveyard, about which he urged his followers to sign a will and pledge to give one-tenth of their property on their death to the movement. The promised Messiah named this graveyard Bahishti Makbara, meaning the celestial graveyard. Well, the institution of Bahishti Makbara is very closely related to the book of the promised Messiah, alayhi salatu wasalam, which is known as al Wasiyat. It was written in 1905, and the promised Messiah, alayhi salatu wasalam, uh, referring to certain revelations which indicated about his uh, demise in near future, he also mentioned that uh, he would like to set up, under divine instruction, a heavenly graveyard. So in order to look after various uh, duties and various uh, aspects of this one, he uh, mentioned certain points and also uh, started uh, the foundation of one anjman e karpardaz masaleh kabristan that is how it was named. It was an administrative body to look after the affairs of this heavenly graveyard. And Hazrat Maulana Nuruddin Sahib actually was very fortunate that he, from the very beginning, was asked to play a very central role in the affairs of Bashti Makbara. Towards the end of 1905, the promised Messiah received warnings through revelations vouchsafed to him of the imminent approach of his end and that only a short span, two or three years of his life, was left. He published his testamentary direction, offering his community the consolation that after his departure, God would help them with the second manifestation of his power. As had happened at the death of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, when God had raised Hazrat Abu Bakr as his second manifestation to rally the Muslims. In 1905, he <clears throat> established the institution of al wasiyat and this uh, required the, <clears throat> you know, the administration to be handled by some men, some members. So for that matter, he appointed uh, an association which was called Sadr Anjwan Ahmadiyya. And uh, Hazrat Khalifat al-Masih al-Abbar was appointed its first president so that they should look after the administrative affairs. The promised Messiah, peace be upon him, passed away after a short illness at Lahore on the 26th of May 1908. His sacred remains were transported to Kadyan, where they arrived at 8 a.m. on the 27th of May. They were placed in his garden house, where during the greater part of the day, his devoted followers, as they arrived from near and far, had the opportunity of beholding for the last time the serene countenance of their holy and dearly loved master. The news of the death of the promised Messiah struck the members of the movement with shattering poignancy. They were bewildered, and in the hour of their utter bereavement, had recourse to humble and earnest supplications for guidance. Perhaps the most deeply affected was Mulana Nuruddin, who gave expression to his deep sense of loss repeatedly in the exclamation, After Hazard's death, the universe seems lifeless. What to do? Which way to turn? So the same day the members, the elders of the community, they gathered in the house of uh, uh, Nawab Muhammad Ali Khan Sahib and uh, Khwaja Kamaluddin Sahib made a very passionate uh, lecture and uh, statement at that time that the one who was appointed by Allah, he came and he did his duty, now he has passed away. What should we do uh, while he has gone? So naturally, there was a moment of silence, but then uh, uh, some members of the Jamaat, they started speaking and expressing their opinion. And some of the members of the Anjman, especially Sheikh Ramtullah Sahib, he stood up and he said that in my opinion, uh, Hazrat Mawri Nuruddin Sahib is the most appropriate man to <coughs> lead the Jamaat as the spiritual leader. So let us all agree that he should be the Khalifa. Iske baad خواجہ کمال الدین صاحب نے کہا کہ ٹھیک ہے آپ کی تجویز بہتر ہے بہت اچھی ہے لیکن اس سے پہلے کہ ہم کوئی فیصلہ کریں ہمیں حضرت اما جان سے پوچھ لینا چاہیے حضرت اما جان حضرت مسیم حضرت مسیم عہد علیہ السلاۃ والسلام کی بیگم میں اہلیہ اہلیہ تھی تو جب حضرت اما جان کے پاس یہ تجویز پیش کی گئی تو حضرت اما جان نے کہا کہ بے شک حضرت حکیم مولوی نور الدین صاحب جماعت کے بہت معزز آدمی ہیں اور ان سے بہتر میں نہیں سمجھتی کہ کوئی شخص 
جماعت کی رہنمائی کر سکتا ہے وجہ افراد مؤسسة صدر انجمن احمدی الى حضرته وقالوا له ان قرارنا هو ان تتولى الخلافة فقال لهم لن استطيع الاجابة الان ينبغي ان ادعو اولا فتوضع وصل ركعتين واستخار الله تبارك وتعالى ثم قال لهم جميعا بعد ذلك تعالوا نذهب الى الى حيث حبيبنا وهو يقصد الامام المهدي عليه الصلاه والسلام الذي كان مسجا ولم يكن قد دفن بعد وذهبوا جميعا بعد ذلك الى هناك having arrived in the garden mufti muhammad sadiq sahib in accordance with the wishes of all present read out the following request According to the command of the promised Messiah, alayhi salatu wa salam, set out in al-wasiyat, we Ahmadis, whose signatures are appended below, are sincerely convinced that all present and future members of the Ahmadiyya community should take the pledge of spiritual allegiance in the name of Ahmad to the first emigrant, Hazrat Hakim Nuruddin, who is the most learned and most virtuous of us all. and is the most devoted and oldest friend of Hazrat Imam, who held him up as an excellent example. As he said, How good would it be if every member of the community were a Nuruddin? So would it be if every heart were filled with the light of the certainty of faith. Hazrat Maulana Sahib's orders will be as binding upon us as were the orders of the promised Messiah, alayhi salatu wa salam. In reply, Hazrat Mulana Nuruddin observed during the course of an address, Look at my past life. I have never coveted leadership. I know myself well and my Lord knows me even better. I desire nothing of the world. All I desire is that my master may be pleased with me. For this I pray and for this have I resided and will continue to reside at Gardian. I have for some time reflected on what shall be our situation after Hazrat Sahib. That is why I have striven that Mia Mahmood's education may be pushed forward. There are three likely persons among the close relatives of Hazrat Sahib. There is Mia Mahmood Ahmed, who is both my brother and my son. I have a special relationship with him. Then Mir Nasir Nawab, being Hazrat Sahib's father-in-law, is entitled to his respect and our respect. The third one is his son-in-law, Nawab Muhammad Ali Khan, of the devoted servants of the faith, there is Sayyid Muhammad Ahsan, who possesses outstanding ability. He is a descendant of the Holy Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. He has performed such meritorious service to the faith as puts a person like me to shame. In his old age, he has written several books in support of Hazrat Sahib and thus rendered a unique service. Then there is Malvi Muhammad Ali, who serves in many ways that I cannot even conceive of. All these are available in Gardian. Among outsiders, there are Sayyid Hamid Shah, Maulvi Ghulam Hassan Khan, and several others. This is a heavy, a perilous responsibility which can be carried only by a commissioned one of God, who has wonderful promises of divine support which sustain him against back-breaking burdens. At this time, It is necessary that men and women should become united. To achieve this, pledge your allegiance to any of the revered personages I have named. I shall also do so along with you. I am feeble, do not keep good health, and my temperament is not suited to the task, which is heavy and not easy to perform. He further said, I promise you solemnly, that if you choose any of those I have named, I shall pledge my allegiance to him along with you. But if you insist on pledging your allegiance to me, then note carefully that this pledge means total commitment. On one occasion, Hazrat Sahib indicated to me indirectly to think no more of my home. From that moment, all my honor and all my thinking became centered on him, and I never thought of home. Thus, pledging allegiance is a solemn and grave matter.